This video lesson is about arrays of objects and it starts in your textbook on page 146 through to 150. We are going to work through activities 1 to 5, which I've summarized in this lesson over here. I would like you to skip activity 2 though, because we want to create our constructor method in the same way that we did in the past. In this first program that we are going to write, we are going to have an object definition class and of course an application class. The object definition class will consist of an object which is an array. Let's start. First instruction, start a new class with this name and create two fields. The one field is an array called fr string and it must store a maximum of 200 numbers and the other one is called f size which will store only the number of elements in the array. The fields must both be private so that the data they store cannot be changed directly from the outside of the class. Let's have a look at what this looks like in Delphi. I've created my string array class. It is saved as string array underscore u as a unit. And my t string array class has two private fields, f r string, and it consists of an array with numbers 1 to 200 of type string, and of course the variable or the field f size, which will store how many elements in this array are currently being used. So if you follow these instructions exactly, you would now have received the marks for the first activity, which is on page 146. I strongly suggest that you type into Delphi exactly what I'm doing in this video, so that you can end up having a working program. In the second part of our question, we are to create a constructor with no code in the body because both strings and integers have default values once they are created. The constructor does not need code to initialize the elements in the array. So our default constructor, constructor create, has no code inside because by default an array will be initialized with empty values for those strings. Let's look at the third instruction. Add an overloaded constructor method which has a file name as input parameter and use the file name names.txt and here you can download it. The constructor must then do the following. Test if the file exists in the same directory as your class. And if it does, then a suitable message must be displayed and the program must exit. If it does not, then a suitable message must be displayed and the program must exit. However, if it does, then we must read this file into the array and initialize the elements of our array with the names in the file. Remember to increase f size each time you read a value into the array. So all of this must happen in our overloaded constructor method. So our constructor create and it's overloaded and it has the parameter file name as an input variable. Let's go and look at it. File name is an input variable for my new overloaded constructor. I've created two temporary variables inside the constructor. The file name tf, which will come from here, and a temp string value. I start by making f size equal to zero. Why? Because at this stage, my array field in this class has no values. We are going to start reading in values from the text file. In these few lines, I test whether the file name actually exists. And if it's true, then we can continue. And if it's not, we'll exit with this message. Assuming it's true, we assign this text file variable to the file name that came in as the parameter. Then we reset our file access variable or our text file variable, tf, so that my file pointer is now in the file at the top of the file. So reset, if you remember correctly, opens the file and puts the pointer right at the top of the file so that it can be read. And now we have a simple while not end of file statement. While not end of file, the file access variable tf, read line into temp string from this file. So once I've read temp string, I increment f size so that I can put temp string into the first position in the array. So f size, having been incremented from 0, is now 1. So in position 1 in my array, I put the value temp string. And I keep on doing this until my whole array has been filled. So what's happened here in this constructor? 
We've received a text file as input variable. We've tested to see if it exists in the same folder or same directory. Then we've read it from the beginning to the end and we've populated our array field with the values in the text file. So this user-defined class, which has an array as a field, now has a populated array. Remember to do exactly what I'm doing in the video in your own Delphi. Let's look at the instructions. We've added an overloaded constructor. It did have an input parameter and the file name was there. We did test if the file name is in the same directory and we did exit if it wasn't. And finally, we read in every element in the text file and populated the array while doing so. So now we're with number four. Code and access a method get size, which returns a field value of size. So in Delphi, let's go and look. Our access a method must be a function. The function get size must produce or send an integer back to the calling program. So my function get size result is equal to f size. That was easy and you're used to doing that. Let's go to number five. Code and access a method called get element that will accept the index of an element as a parameter and return the element in that position. So what does this mean? It means there must be some input into this function which will indicate the index number in the whole array that it wants returned. So typically my function will now have a value like 5 coming in and it will send out the element in position 5 of that array. So our function get element has a number as an input parameter and it's going to send back the contents of the string in position this number in my array. So it's not a complex line but you must understand what it's asked. And then number six, code a mutator method called set element. This will change an element in the array given the new element and position of that element in the array. So two things must be input parameters in this procedure. We will need two values as input parameters, the element and the position of the element. And we must change in our array at that position the new value. So here's our procedure set element. It's our mutator method. We have two values or two input parameters, position and the new string. And what do we do with these? Well, at position in my array, so my array name, square brackets position, so at that position, we change the value to be the new in string, that one over there. And just before we write our application, let's write a two string function. And a toString function, by the way, all toString functions do this, combine the fields in the object into a single string. And in this case, our instruction says, separate each field from the others with a space. So we will have one long string consisting of all the elements in the array. It could be up to 200. And these elements will be separated with a space. And here's our toString method. I have two variables, two temporary variables within this function. Temp string and loop. Temp string is a string and loop is an integer. By the way, why do I have this temporary variable? So that I can send it back to result at the end. So I use temp string to create the string as we go through the whole array. And finally, I merely send it back using result. And loop will indicate how many of the elements in the array I've already processed. So I start off making temp string an empty string and then I run my loop from 1 to the number of elements in my array and F size kept track of how many elements there are in the array and each time I read a new element from the array this time there's no file involved temp string becomes the old value of temp string which used to be empty plus a space followed by the next element in the array array fr string and at position loop which initially will be one and once I've run through the whole loop by the way notice that this line for loop colon equals one to f size do terminates when it reaches the first semicolon so although I don't have a begin and end this is the end of the loop the line result equals temp string is not part of that loop and that's why I've indented it in this way so we've done number seven and all that is left is to write the application class called test string array to test all these methods in my D string array class.
Here's my application and let's have a look at it. You can see that I called it test string array underscore u and of course there's the DPR as well. And in this class our instruction is to test all the methods in my user defined class. So in the string array underscore u class. So the first thing I needed to do is to make use of the string array underscore u class. Then in my global variables that I declare, I declared one instance of the T string array class and I called it str r2. So this is an instance of the string array class. My form that I created looks as follows. I have two buttons, enter from the file and display the contents of the file as well as a rich edit in which I can display. Let's have a look at the code from enter from a file. So in my button, I have an input box asking the user to enter the name of the file, but I've set it up so that names.txt is the default value. And all of this I store into a temporary variable declared over here in the button of name file name. And then in my second line, I call the overloaded constructor, the parameterized constructor, with the input value of file name. So tree string array dot create file name and we all know what that does it goes into the string array and reads the elements in the file into the array let's look at the second button my second button says display the contents of the array so if i double click on that it says rich edit dot lines of add my instance of that class string r2 and we call the two string method so this will produce all the elements in the array as one long string and that whole long string will be printed on the rich edit. I've added two more lines here so that I can test the get element and the get size accessor methods. So in the first line the second element in string array 1 is the instance name of the string array class and I call the get element method and I call it in this case just for element number two and in the second part for that element I'm calling the get size method so now let's run our program and see what it does click on the enter from a file button I'm going to use the default name and now I'm going to display the contents of the file as well as the element in position two and the number of elements so there's my the result of the two string method all the names one after the other separated by a space here's the second last line the second element in string one is Patricia and if we look at it we can see that that's true and the last element in array two is Paul and is that true yes it is by the way I mentioned array two because I started off writing this program with more than one array I hope that you have now been successful in creating from the video and from the instructions on the web your first object using arrays as fields.